All right, this is uh, me talking about my C6 transmission that I am currently rebuilding. Um, I'm going to be putting it in here in my Mustang, and uh, this situation is going to be a fully rollerized C6 uh, wide ratio kit, and it's going to have a gear vendor under overdrive on the back end of it. Um, I like the idea of it just because the C6s are popular, they're mechanical, as in like I don't need electronics, etc., I mean, I guess some people, uh, you know, might have a problem with vacuum and, and mechanics, but I don't. I, I'm fine with that, and I'm fine with electronic too, but my point is, is that I think I got one heck of a setup as far as I'm concerned, uh, especially now the way I got it all set up. But anyway, so this is the C6 transmission right here. I took it all apart. It's been sitting outside probably for over 20-some years. I'm not even joking. Sitting outside. Kind of rusty inside there uh, in some places, and I was able to buy other parts to replace, etc., etc., um, as expected, you know, it. if you know about C6s, it had three clutches in the forward, uh, three clutches in the direct, and I think it had uh, three or four in the low reverse clutch. So it was kind of a, and it was shot, by the way, in the uh, direct, I think it was, that was totally shot. Um, like right, rubbed the steel, uh, the uh, clutches all the way down to the steels. Um, first thing I want to talk about is uh, the manuals that I use. I'm going to call this the Haynes or the blue manual. I'm going to call this the yellow or the SA design manual. And I'm going to call this the green or the motors manual. Uh, I used to do, tra tra well, I used to do automotive work professionally. Um, and the motors manual is what, um, one of the things that I used to use all the time. Uh, this is the fifth edition, which means this is the uh, last year that you're going to find the C6 in this thing before they swapped over to AODs and 4R70s and 75s and AOD, A4ODs and blah, blah, blah. Uh, very, 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 very good manual. This one here actually has oil circuit diagrams, exploded view, lots of troubleshooting stuff. Um, me, I'm very comfortable with this. Very comfortable with this. This one here is uh, pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, TCI. They're, they're basically building TCI stuff inside here is what they're basically doing. Uh, especially for the C6. I really haven't read the C4 section, section at all. So I don't... I mean, I browsed it, but I didn't read it. But for the C6, they're, they're, they're using TCI stuff everywhere. So... But what I really, really, really appreciate about this one is the fact that uh, for the servos and the pistons and the, uh, you know, apply levers and whatnot for second gear on the C6 and all that kind of stuff, uh, not only the history, but, I mean, the availability and the options for that. This, this is very popular with me in that regard. This was very nice colors. You know, it, it does show rebuilding and taking disassembly and all that. It's it's pretty good. But I wouldn't recommend this, obviously, for a beginner, in my opinion. I just don't think that unless you are doing exactly what it says in the actual manual, which, by the way, I will tell you that uh, there are some pictures that are kind of sort of wrong. So it can be confusing if you're not sure what you're doing here. Uh, I think I got this one here given to me. Uh, for Christmas, birthday, or or maybe they just handed it to me. I don't know. The blue book here, the Haynes manual. Uh, if you're a beginner, this is it. This is the one you want right here. This is, uh, uh, it, it has lots of black and white pictures, but lots of photos, lots of diagrams. Um, one of the other things that I, re and exploded views and, and uh, legends, it's really, really, really good. Um, one of the things that I like about it is as you're going through, the like for example the yellow book here this when you look for the specs you got to flip to one page and it tells you the specs for everything on that one page and this one here it tells you the specs right there in at that on that page or even on that picture and that instruction so this is what's really cool about this one so if i had to do only one book here well i would probably do the motors manual but that's just because i know what i'm doing but this one here will definitely do nothing but stock this will take you back to stock this one will take you to stock uh, they'll talk about shift kits they'll talk about you know uh torque converters and a few other things this one here is again it's all what the c6 is all about uh tci um so 
those are the manuals that I use, and I probably use the Blue Book the most, actually, with referencing this one here quite a bit. And just kind of double-checking everything through here, okay? Um, so, for the parts, this uh, transmission kit is really old. I bought this back in 2000 or 2001 or something like that. And with this intention, this purpose, actually, to do this transmission, I... Uh, I just didn't think it was going to take me this long, but it did. Uh, it comes with everything. This is the Master Super Pro kit. It came with steels. It came with clutches. I got a couple clutches left over. Uh, it has a second uh, band, uh, applied band. It has all the bushings. It has all the springs. It has all the uh, everything. It has everything. I mean, like, this, this thing is the absolute master kit. It has the, uh, the scat pack is what they call it, which is the shift kit, etc., etc. And weird enough, I lost the instructions for that, and I found the instructions in here, in the yellow book. So I was actually able to read about this Transcat pack or whatever uh, here in the TCI book. However, um, before I get you too far into that, guess what? I didn't use the TCI Transcat kit. No, 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 no. What I did use was is I used uh, Shift Technology Products uh, Superior Transmission Parts. That This is the shift kit that I use, um, and I use the uh, C6R Super Servo, also from that same company. Uh, actually, I bought quite a bit of stuff from, uh, or well, not from them, but I found it online and I bought their products. I wanted to keep it all the same. Um, TCI, I guess I could have, but... I don't know. I just found these uh, probably. Well, I had bought that and before there was such thing as the internet, pretty much. And then, uh, then I started finding all this, and I just I got it all as a package. By the way, this shift kit comes with uh, this uh, Steel Series boost valve as well, which makes basically that uh, sleeve and the valve itself both steel, whereas the factory one is uh, aluminum and then steel, which has been known to quote stick. So that's why I bought that uh, kit right there for the uh, shift kit and for that because it came with the package. Uh, here is my uh, valve body right there, by the way. So I got it all done and uh, I followed the uh, big old instructions. I'm not going to show you that, but I did follow that. Uh, the uh, ser Super Servo, this is the Super Servo right there. Looks pretty nice. Maybe not quite as fancy and red as the TCI. I have a powder coater. I could have done it, but I didn't. Um, also, here we go. Some more shift technology products here. What this? This is, uh, let's see, where's it at? Oh, yeah, the uh, K0111. It's basically the front hub uh, to ring gear heavy-duty snap ring. As you can see um, in this one right there, don't let this happen to you to ruin your day. Uh, you can see it's a broken snap ring, which is these things right here. These are the snap rings right there. Uh, you can see they're kind of a little thin. And here you can see the actual uh, super tough one installed into the front hub for the planetary for the front planet right there. Uh, it's really thick. Um, I bought two of them, actually. I don't know. It says, you know front hub to ring gear and I, I noticed that both the front hub and the rear hub for the rear planet are the same size and the same snap ring so just as a precaution I went ahead and bought two and replaced the front and the back so that's what I did um what else happened oh yeah I bought the uh from uh, by the way uh global transmission parts right here Global transmission parts. This is where I got a lot of stuff. And uh, then I bought the wide ratio kit. The wide ratio kit. I, I went to CK Performance and I ordered it. And it took him over two months and he never sent it to me. Um, I've actually did a bunch of reading, of course, afterwards. And found out that he has a problem with that. I don't know why. But I ended up just canceling the order via the credit card and saying, screw you. And went out and bought uh, the one from PATC, that is uh, Peter Alpha Tango Charlie dot com. PATC, they sent me their wide ratio rollerized kit. So, what came with that? 
Um, well, I've got the uh, six pinion steel forward planet. It came with this uh, this new uh, forward hub that goes with that. Came with this new ring gear with the great big uh, you know gear on the one side. Uh, so this is the old ring, uh, sun shell and sun gear, by the way. And I had to actually remove the snap ring here to use it to assemble this one. Because the, the, uh, this one here, by the way, came unassembled. So that, that sun gear was not inside the sun shell. I actually had to slide it in there, get it all lined up, slide it in there, and use the snap ring from the old one to get that all lined up and done. Um, by the way, you can also see that I believe this is what they say a 4R100 uh, sunshell and they have to do some machine work so that it doesn't uh, interfere with your, your shifting band, your, your band right here, this thing, uh, on the wide version. This is the wide version, by the way. I think you saw that I had another shifting band over there in that TCI kit. That is the original style. Uh, that one there is the aftermarket wide band. And I believe that's the reason why they have to machine this in order to fit the wide one. So that one there I got from PATC as well. Uh, just so you know. It also came with this rear planet. You can see here. Look at this. Three pinion rear planet in an aluminum assembly. Um, when you when you look at that yellow manual over there, by the way, the TCI kit claims to come with a steel six pinion rear planet as well as the steel six pinion front planet. That's what it says in that book there anyway. Uh, I don't know if that's true or not. But the funny thing was is that I got this one and it has the machine groove to fit the needle bearing. But I pulled this four pinion uh, rear planet out of this transmission. And I'm like, dude, why not the four pinion? Um, you know, I took and I actually stuck this. I'm not going to take this apart for you, but I took that three pinion planet and I stuck it inside that uh, rear hub area, which, by the way, that comes with it too, by the way, the, the rear, the, this hub uh that the the gear sl the planet slides around in it's down underneath here i stuck that three pinion unit in there and i actually kind of was able to wobble it around it just it was just i mean it would work but it was just loose i i didn't like it and then i put my four pinion in there and it was you know still loose but much tighter and uh, so i had a buddy of mine actually uh use his machine shop and he machined my four pinion unit to where I could accept this needle bearing and therefore use my four pinion uh, which I think is going to be a lot better than this three pinion okay so doing that um, let's see what else oh yeah down inside here there is uh, the race um, the the steel race that is for uh, the one-way clutch there's a there's a one-way bearing assembly that's down inside here and that there there is a new race that they send you for this uh just because of the fact that you're adding all these needle bearings etc cetera, etc cetera. so i also have that as well inside here i already installed that um you can see here that this has the thrust washer there on the case there i staked it back in after a, you can see the bolt head right there um i actually uh put that race inside there and then i decided to put that back in there that that uh thrust washer back there um but i wanted to go a step further which i remember when i was at ck performance he had this option to buy a parking pole gear that was set up for a needle uh bearing basically you can kind of see it here there we go so i have my uh my buddy at the machine shop Machine that up to where we could make that a roller bearing assembly. Um, I'm, I'm just going to say this much. If you are new or you haven't done this much and you're going to do what I've been doing. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to tell you what I did to help you. But I, I, I got to tell you that um, be careful. Just make sure that you're getting all your measurements proper. I have dry assembled this transmission. Prob I'm not even kidding you. Over 25 times from the front 
down from the back up i mean you name it i have dry assembled this thing many 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 times to check for clearances to check for interference to check for everything and uh plus i've got experience in mechanical so i'm i'm very confident that this is going to work which i'm going to explain some more about that too by the way um as to why i have that confidence as far as why everything's going to work because again i've been assembling everything um I received, when I received that uh, wide ratio kit, by the way, one of the other things that happened was, um, is they they sent me a little bubble packet of, uh, like one of these, little bubble pack envelope that was sealed up and it had the, the, the roller needle bearings in it. But one of the things that I found is that they didn't have anything for this uh, forward planet right here that rubs into the forward uh, hub. They didn't have that. So uh, they were saying that, you know, you could transfer. Actually, there was no instructions. I'm sorry. There were no instructions. I was assuming then that they wanted to transfer the uh, the old thrust washer here from, you know, the forward planet over to this forward planet and then, you know, put it all together. But it's just not going to work. It won't tang up here like it would in the old in the old unit here it, it it's just not gonna happen so um basically what i did was is on a whim i went to ebay and i bought this right here i went to ebay and you can again pause the uh, screen if you want the part number uh it says it's actually for an e4 od 96, but somebody scratched it out and put 4r100 and I did have to cut this thing open, so I don't know if they kind of gently cut it open and then put everything in it and resealed it or whatever, because this thing was sealed when I got it. Uh, but anyway, my point is I actually uh, uh, bought this on eBay. Uh, it wasn't cheap. It was 100 bucks. Um, and as you can see, I got quite a bit left, so I'm going to have those left over, I guess. But I, I did it on a whim to see that if I could make something work over here and sure enough the absolute largest bearing in there was this one right here and as you can see it just happens to fit let's see is that the right way yep it just happens to fit on there perfectly okay um, and then after again I assembled everything I took this and assembled here and just assembled this whole thing and I double checked to make sure that there was not one bearing or whatever that was taking all the pressure or or not even touching or whatever based upon assembly and I found that this thing is is right on it's balls on man it's right there um but that being said though uh this one right here this is uh was in that bubble pack envelope this one can not be a roller needle bearing because you've got to get this to where this doesn't move around. It has to center, which this one won't because it's tanged, and uh, it can't stick. It can't stick out here uh, because um, let's see, what would that? Why would that not stick out there? There's there's a reason. Somehow there's a reason. I can't really think of it right now. But the way this is all assembled, oh, I think. Yeah, because this goes, it goes somewhere. I, I can't remember, but there's a reason why you, I, I basically looked all over the internet to try to see if I could actually modify this for a roller needle bearing. And I, I couldn't find, I couldn't even find one that size. I typed it in Google. I typed it in DuckDuckGo. I typed it in everywhere. I, I even went to like some fancy uh, needle bearing warehouse or whatever, and they had no size that would even be that Plus, again, you would have to figure out a way to get this thing tamed to where it don't move around like this thing. And it's just really, if you can make it happen, great. Make a video on it. Um, and then also this one right here. This is the other one that you cannot actually uh, make into a needle bearing. And again, the same reason. It's tanged to keep it center. Um, obviously, you can't get close to this because that's where the... Uh, uh, that's where the stator support goes down inside there. So you don't want this to be anywhere near in the center portion here. Uh, you've got, um, you know, you, you just, these two thrust washers are going to be thrust washers. Let's put it that way. 
but uh, I've got everything else a needle bearing including the parking pole in the back so this is going to be about as efficient as it possibly can be now as I've said uh, the other thing that I did oh and by the way just real quick like the uh, the the the, the one-way cage that was in here I uh, did not reuse the old one I went and bought the brand new plastic uh, a new and improved cage or whatever for our 100 cage c6 cage whatever and I put it in here and it works beautifully so awesome no problems there um, so uh, one of the things that because I did take this thing apart and together so many 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 times uh, one of the things that I found was is that when the direct here and everything was all assembled and it was slipped over the top of the shell that it was sitting down in here a little bit deeper than um, not necessarily than I would have liked but it just it was just sitting down deeper and the problem with that was is that when I would actually put the front pump in here with the stator support so here's your here's your number one selective right here this is the one that you're supposed to use for your overall clearance right and this is a brand new metal one by the way the uh, original one was plastic there was actually two plastic thrust washers inside this thing but this is the brand new metal one and uh, one of the things that I found was is that I, I wanted to use the metal one but I found that there was uh, clearance uh, quite a bit of clearance. I was going to have to go out and buy another selective thrust uh, washer. As a matter of fact, uh, there was like over 60,000, eh, about 60 to 70 thousands worth of clearance that was not going to make it work. It was just going to be too sloppy. Um, so, as I said, this input shell right here, or the direct drum, was sitting right down inside here, which... You know, you got to be careful how you move things because when you start moving things, like for example, you start, if like for example, if I were to have moved this sun shell upwards from the bottom, then that what that does is these bushings right here now move on the actual output shaft. Okay, so um, it doesn't quite line up with say these holes and stuff like that. So you got to be careful how you move this thing. But one of the cool things was is that. You could actually move the way this direct uh, drum sits right in there up and down after I got all this other stuff together because um, it's still, you know, splined into the clutches and everything like it's supposed to be. And, uh, and it still splines in here. And it uh, closes up my clearance on that stator support selective over there. So how I did that um was basically so let's see here this uh trying to, oh yeah so this steel thing here goes right over the top of that right there okay so there it is sitting there but right now what i'm missing is is i'm missing the bearing inside there okay so let me show you something real quick so here is the, um, this is part of the uh, three-piece original needle bearing. There is a needle bearing that was in here. Well, you can see it right there. See right there? That's a three-piece. Because if you, if you can actually take these needle cage out and then there'll be a, uh, another, you know, piece of it left over, a bottom piece. So basically there's three pieces. There's the bottom piece, there's the needle cage, and then there's this cover right here, okay? Well, cool thing was is that, um, again, with that, oh, here we go, here we go, perfect. So here you go. So there's, there's the bottom, there's the needle cage, and then here's the top, okay? So that was the original needle bearing, uh, and, and this one here you can't get out, but I got the, the top part out actually which I'm gonna use by the way um, somewhere around here there it is right here so this is the new needle bearing that they want you to use they go inside there like this okay so when you uh, you put that down inside there see you got that you got that machined area right there that this thing sits inside of and that's what keeps this thing from going side to side 
to hit these gears, to hit the shaft that's sitting in here. That's what keep it centered. Now, here's the cool thing. So this one, right? Get the input shell here, or the shell, sun shell. So this one, how do you keep this thing from moving around? Well, it's already got that lip right there. So you put that right there. Look at that. So now this won't move around. And I've just given it about 35,000 worth of thickness here. Okay. But I still need one more. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this other one that I got out of here. And I'm going to slowly but surely grind that off. Sand it off. And make this washer just be a washer. And then when I do that. Then I'll put it down inside there like that. Of course, that, that little raised lip there will be gone. And then I'll put this back in there. Okay? So what I'm saying is, is that this area right here is still going to be deep enough for me to be able to uh, add this one right here. This thickness right there. And put that on top of there. So it'll still stay centered. Okay? And we are going to basically raise, um, well, see, this thing sits just like this. And then you start stacking everything on top. And then you get the direct drum on top. And it just sits right down inside there, those tabs, right? And you're basically going to raise that direct drum up about uh, 70 thousandths, which is exactly what I need. And uh, And then now I can use that brand new selective washer that I just bought I don't have to go buy another one of those which I'm having a hard time finding those things actually so be honest with you there but my point is is that I'm going to make this thing fully rollerized and uh it's going to work perfectly exactly as I expected and I'm going to be able to use some of these uh, old pieces from the old transmission to actually get my clearances uh correct without having to go look for a hard to find uh, selective number one washer right now and uh, again here's the old one this is a plastic one uh, I don't like the idea of plastic because plastic I think is a I mean it tends to rub a little harder if, if that makes any sense to you and also around here somewhere I can't find it but uh, the other plastic one is actually broken um, so they get brittle and they break eventually so I don't want to use plastic which is why I went with the metal one and by the way, when I went with the metal one, I think I got it from, I don't remember if I got it from Global or somebody, but it was the only size that they had. So I'm kind of, you know, limited as to what I get, but now it doesn't matter because I'm going to be able to make this work. So that is basically, um, I know it's a long dragged out video. I do apologize for that, but that is basically, um, my C6 transmission that I'm going to fully rollerize and put a uh, gear vendor behind it. And uh, I've got it all to work. No problem. Um, of course, the real test, of course, will be when I put it in the car and actually try to ride, drive it and run it. But, you know, as far as making everything fit in the case and making it fully rollerized, absolutely. Just two thrust washers, um, which are brand new, by the way. And everything else is uh, needle bearings. Uh, and it's pretty strong. So, thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe. Hope I didn't bore you, but uh, I plan on coming up with another uh, video as to how I assemble. And that one there is going to be, I think, a little quicker because I'm just going to stop and start. Thank you much. See you.